Okay, I got this Blues Junior a couple of weeks ago. I traded for a, another amp. Um, these are really cool little amps, but I've heard of some common problems with them. Uh, I've heard these <coughs> capacitors aren't great and will eventually start leaking. Um, I don't see any leakage currently, and they all test good, so I don't think that's much of a problem on this one at this point. Um, all the solder joints on these boards down here look good. Another common problem, I think, is these tubes. Uh, the bias isn't correct, and they get hot, and you can definitely see on this one, it's got quite a bit of, quite a bit of burn in on that right EL84. Um, I haven't tested it out yet, but one way to fix that is to add a resistor to kind of cool off the bias up here. So I've done that. I'm going to see if that makes a difference. This one, uh, let's see if I can get my light here. This C3 resistor is the bright cap, or C3 capacitor is the bright cap. And if somebody's already clipped that, um, that should reduce some of the harshness. Um, everything else looks pretty good in here. Um, I put some solder on these connectors on this speaker because you certainly don't want that to come loose. Made sure this jack was nice and tight. The reverb is pretty intense on this amp. Um, it, it The usable range is at about two. <laughs> um, you get beyond that and it, it gets pretty obnoxious sounding. There's supposed to be a modification you can do on the board to cool that off some. I'm not going to try that yet. But I did get a, uh, a mod reverb tank we're going to put in here. I've got the old one out right now. Um, they look just alike, so I'm not sure how much of a difference that's going to make. But we'll get the new one in here and get it plugged in, put back together, and see what we're working with. Here's one other thing I did. Um, this was supposed to have a kind of a cage mounted on the back of this that kind of protects the tubes, and it was missing. I guess somebody had pulled it out and lost it. I found this perforated stainless steel on Amazon and just cut it to fit right there. Use the existing screw holes to put it in there. Um, it doesn't do anything to protect the bottom, but at least there's not a gaping hole back there and still let some air flow through. All right, I got it all put together and <clears throat> plugged in and hooked up. Um, got just kind of some basic settings here. One thing I will say, this reverb is a lot more usable than that stock tank. I don't know what the difference is, but I can put this one on five and it still sounds pretty good and have a little bit of room left to work. Um, that last one, the usable range was somewhere between, you know, you could use it off and then you could hear it between one and two and that was about it. Um, no noticeable hum. There's a, there's a slight hum on here, but this is a noisy room, so I wouldn't expect much less than that. Um, I can't tell that the resistor did anything uh, to the tone, to the sound of the amp. Um, it still breaks up and distorts like it's supposed to. Uh, the one thing I really like about this amp is that I can get some decent sounds at apartment volume, but I can also rattle the windows of the apartment if I choose to. Um, I just want it to hold up a little bit better than what I understand they do the way they come from the factory. Um, all in all, I'm pretty happy with my trade, pretty happy with the amp. This will probably be my, my main amp for a while to come. All right. Wasn't going to play any, but I know people would complain if they didn't hear anything from the amp after I worked on it. Um, try to demonstrate the reverb that's that's about halfway um, that's all 
all the way off. maxed out which is honestly way too much but I think you could get away with I think you could get away with playing this about halfway maybe even on maybe even on five um, that's about four right there um, it's not terrible gain up way too high Turn my volume down here soon. And then we still, like I've got the gain up about 80%. I think on here it's just called the volume. Um, and then there's a master. I've got the master on. I've got the master on about three, um, which is about all I can stand in this room by myself. Um, but it's definitely still still driving those tubes plenty plenty good enough of course i guess the the distortion's coming from the the preamp tubes not those main power tubes um so just cooling off those main power tubes um or adjusting the bias on those main power tubes should make them not run quite as hot and hopefully last quite a bit longer. Um, like I said, that one, you could see it, it's been getting hot. It's, it's burned a lot of the, a lot of the ink off of the outside of the tube. So that was a pretty simple modification. That was a 82 K resistor that I put on that. It's R 51. There's a couple of videos on here that show you how to do that. Um, combining resistors in parallel like that drops the overall resistance. And I think that R51 is naturally like a 35, something like that. I'd have to look. And then combining that 82K drops the overall resistance of the that parallel set of resistors down to about like 25 um, which matches it a lot closer to that R52 resistor, um, which cools the bias off quite a bit. It's not, it's not driving those tubes nearly as hard. Uh, the bright clap cap, I don't know what this sounded like with the bright cap connected. I think it sounds pretty good with the clip, so I'm not sad that somebody already did that. Um, and then that, that reverb mod, this is the, this is the reverb tank I pulled out of there. And like I said, they look just alike. I don't really know what the difference is between the Ruby reverberation unit that they put in there and that mod unit that I bought to put in there. But I think to my ears, it sounds better. I should have done it before and after, but I didn't. So here we are. I hope you guys have a good day. Please like and subscribe if you hadn't already. And we'll see you next time.